pray, the prayer of elimination. Guide us, O oh God, by your word and spirit, that in your light we may see light, in truth find freedom, and in your will discover your peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The reading for today is from the book of Matthew, chapter 11, verse 25 to 30. Verse 25. At that time, Jesus said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from wise and learned, and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for this is what you were pleased to do. All things have been committed to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Verse 28. Come to me, all you are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your soul. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. This is the word of the Lord. Morning, church. On behalf of the church, I want to specially wish all the fathers here, uh, fathers, uh, grandfathers, spiritual fathers, whatever form of nurturing that you give uh, towards the younger generation, just want to thank you uh, for your labor of love. And we know that you're not perfect, but yet we know you've tried your best. So we pray that God's grace will all the more be sufficient for you as you continue on in faithfulness to be the best father, whether it's a biological father or spiritual father or both, that the Lord will continue to empower you. Amen? Amen. So I think a lot of our men also need encouragement, though they are, they are not maybe as expressive as uh, ladies, but I think our fathers also do need encouragement. So today, do go and tell uh, the men in your life that you love them and you appreciate them. Can we do that? Yeah, okay. Let me begin by showing you a picture of Strike the Sheep. This is not deep fake, huh? All right? Uh, it's not been, uh, you know, engineered in any ways. This is Strike the Sheep. A couple of years ago, Strike the Sheep became very popular. They found this sheep that uh, uh, hid in a cave for six years. So as a, as a result of being hidden and not found for six years in a cave, what happens is its flea grew and grew and grew, right? And it grew when they actually um, uh, uh, cut out and weigh it, it weighed as much as 60 pounds, which is about 27 kg of uh, fleas, of that fur. And it is 23 kg more heavier than the ordinary. In other words, strike the sheep carried on its body for the last six years, six times of the weight that it should be carrying. And why is strike the sheep carrying so much of weight in its body? Because it was a sheep without its shepherd. Friends, life presents us many kinds of burdens, a lot of stresses. A lot of expectation and we often feel overwhelmed and weighed down but life of a Christian though the Lord doesn't say we will not have burdens but we can leave those burden with our Good Shepherd amen life without the Good Shepherd is like Shrek the sheep carrying six times the weight of its body is its normal amount of fleas Likewise, though we have burden, but those burdens become light when we learn to offer them and to be tended, cared by our Good Shepherd. Perhaps, friends, we need to relearn to hear again these words from our Good Shepherd. It's taken as read by Gun Hong in Matthew chapter 11, verses 28. 29, 30. Perhaps we need to re-listen today of this beautiful promise. Come to me, Jesus said, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. 
take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your soul. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Jesus promises us rest for our soul. So turn to the person next to you and say, Jesus promised you rest. It is a promise from Jesus. Jesus promised us rest for our soul. How do we claim or enjoy this promise? How do we do that? Firstly, is to come to Jesus. So in your sermon outline, if you like to put that, put it down. Come to Jesus. That's what the passage says. John Stott once shared a story about a couple. This husband and wife uh, lived during the times of the World War II, and they come from the Eastern Europe country. And they had to run away from the home country because it was at war, and they ran to America. So they went to America to seek uh, refuge, to hide and run away from the war. And so as Eastern Europeans, they are not familiar with the American culture. After staying there for a while, one evening they received a letter. It turns out to be an invitation to a wedding. And at the end of the bottom of the card, it says there, RSVP. Now, we know that RSVP simply means that you are uh, asked to reply, to respond, whether or not you can make it for the wedding, right? But as Eastern European, they do not know the culture, they didn't understand what is RSVP. So in the Eastern, thick Eastern European accent, the husband asked the wife, Wife, what does this mean, RSVP? So they sat and they thought for a while. And suddenly, an inspiration came to mind. Aha, said the husband. Wife, I know what it means. It means, remember, send wedding gifts, presents. Remember, send wedding presents, RSVP. Now, it may be a humor to us, but in this RSVP, it's meant to be an invitation, right? But it turns out to be understood as a demand. Please, Give your wedding gifts, bring your wedding gifts. Often, we do not, we must make sure that we do not misunderstood about our faith. Our faith, as our Lord Jesus Christ, is a faith that invites us to come to Him. Jesus didn't say, go to your God. It's not a command, a demand, but it is an invitation. Jesus invites all of us to come. You know, if you're going to tell your friend, Jerry, hey, Jerry and Karen, why not you come to Parsonage and hang out? Come to Parsonage and hang out. What does it mean? Is, that, is it a command or a demand that I'm giving to, maybe yeah, because I'm the pastor, right? But let's say I'm a friend. It's, it's like, okay, Tina. Tina asked Jerry and Karen, because they're in the same DG, yeah, I'm using the example. Tina said, hey, Jerry and Karen, let's, why not you come to my house? What the, it's an invitation, right? An invitation that that talks about friendship, the relationship, out of love. And that is the thing that we need to understand. We, when we talk about claiming Jesus' promise to us, first of all, we need to understand Jesus invites us to come to Him. That's how we find rest for our souls, my friends, is to come, take, receive this invitation to, to be drawn closer to Jesus, to be intimate with Him, to go to him and it's like a friend coming calling you come and that's where we find rest but very interesting Jesus says come to me right not just any person anything Jesus says come to me and before the verse if you read prior to that Jesus revealed something very important about his identity he says this in verse 27 revealing about himself all things have been committed to me Jesus by my Father, the Creator of heaven and earth, the Father in heaven. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal Him. What does it mean? It means that Jesus is the complete revelation of God. Jesus shows who God is. Jesus is God. 
So when you say, come to me, it's just not any person that Jesus is calling to come to. Jesus is asking you to come to him, to God, to God himself. Jesus is the full revelation of God. Therefore, all the more, we should go to Jesus because Jesus is God. It's an invitation to a friendship with the living God. Isn't it wonderful? It is a friendship to a, to a God that is powerful, that is loving, that is righteous. The words are maybe not so clear. I hope you all can see it clearly. This is words from a hymn. Uh, may I know what hymn is this? What a friend we have in Jesus. And it says this, I love the, the, the author, the way the writer of the hymn writes this. He says that, What a friend we have in Jesus, all our sin and grief to bear. Who bears? Jesus bears, right? What a privilege to carry everything, not just something, to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. I think it's a beautiful hymn that is deep in its experience with a living God. A hymn that responds to this call, Come to me, tired, worn out by stresses and demands, expectation of the world. Will you come to me, the author and perfecter of your life? But friends, it is so easy to choose to find comfort in any place other than Jesus himself. Let me repeat that. It is very easy for us to find other alternatives than to go to Jesus. This is part and parcel of our fleshly, human, sinful nature. What do we run to when we want to find relief for our burdens? Some go to Korean Rama series. Hey, do not do not uh, underestimate the power of the Korean drama series. Once you start with episode one, you will say that it has no control over me after I watch episode two. And lo and behold, the next thing you know, four o'clock in the morning, your husband gets up and see you're still there. Wow, very attentive. Don't worry, dear. He has no control over me. One more. One more episode. It, it's really a, a very... It, it, it's a way that we run to to find relief. But we are not careful. We make... I mean, it's, I'm nothing against watching series and, and movies and TV. But to make it a place of escapism. Constantly you find the trend. Repeatedly you run to this instead of God. That becomes your refuge, your place of comfort. Now, some is Korean drama series, some it may be alcohol. Alcohol to, to numb, to numb the stresses, the pain, the burden for a moment to not be thinking of these things. Some run to pornography, some run to uh, many, many other things, many other avenues. But friends, the reality is this. You can run to them and find comfort, but only for a while. It just numbs it. But when the effect goes away, actually, we feel that not only the burden is not lifted up, sometimes or often it feels worse. I have a friend who loves traveling. Loves traveling. I am not one of them. She loves traveling, but there's one time I was uh, talking to her in casual conversation. Uh, she, she told me that she hasn't been traveling for about a year. Now, if you are an avid traveler, that's a long time. It's like 10 years. All right? A year. Have not gone to anywhere. And I said, why? You love traveling. Uh, she, you have the finances for it. And she said this. She said, because the pain of coming back and facing the reality is worse than the joy of being away. Wow. I was blown away. I'd rather not go because when I come back, it feels so terrible, worse than when I, when I was there enjoying myself. Uh, uh, because there is other in underlining issues. 
why she comes to this uh, stage because of other issues. But friends, my point is this. We can go to find many comforts in many things. Computer games or whether it is social media or any and every other forms. But it never can really give rest for our soul. Can never give us rest from the burdens that we carry. The only is to respond, to come to the author of life. Jesus. One practical way or we can begin to learn to cultivate a sense of coming to Jesus as our resting place is to do this very simple spiritual exercise. All of us are very busy, right? Even if you're retired, are very busy. I know retired people are very busy. Many, many, many things can keep you very occupied. But this is one small way if you have not cultivated uh, learning a longer period of solitude, of rest, of uh, being intentionally aware that God, Jesus, is your resting place, is do this every day, five minutes. You keep in silence. If you have a stopwatch, uh, if you have never tried this, sometimes you think uh, you have been there for a long time. Then you open your eyes, uh, ah, you only two minutes. You will find that we are surrounded, even if you are alone and you stay alone, you may be very restless. Your mind, your heart is like a storm. There's no peace. So it's not just physical space. Five minutes a day, especially for those who are working and we have a very uh, busy schedule, it's good to take a break in the middle of the day. All right? Not in the middle of your meeting. Uh. <laughs> your clients, you know, in your breaks, you know, when you're in your office or at your workstation, just five minutes. When you close your eyes, there are many things will come, noises, voices in your head. Just repeat and tell and affirm the fact that Jesus, you are here with me. That's all. That's all. Just making an intentional effort to be aware. Because God is omnipresent. He is with us. Just acknowledging the presence of God. Five minutes. If you can, put like a stopwatch or something like that. If you are very distracted with your phone, it's best to turn off your phone or keep it away somewhere so that you don't have your WhatsApp message beeping around. Five minutes a day to consciously acknowledge the presence of Jesus in your life. Every day over a period of time, we will become more aware that we can find rest in our Saviour. Second thing that Jesus says in this passage is to take his yoke. Take his yoke. Now, a yoke is a wooden beam, all right? A wooden beam that, uh, that is placed over two animals to carry a load, all right? Let's say uh, in agricultural, it would be to pull the plow. So you have two animals. It is often a picture of being subjected to, submitted to, all right? And in the Bible, in the Old Testament, when you talk about yoke, there's two um, references. The first point of reference is say yoke or being subjected to is to the law of God. You put yourself, you submit yourself under the law of God. You are being yoked to the law. Another one is called being yoke as in under the oppression. All right, under the oppression, often referring to the foreign invaders, people who have come and conquered your land, and you are under the yoke of the oppressor. For example, in Leviticus chapter 26, verse 13, it says this, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt so that you will no longer be their slave. I broke the bars of your yoke, the yoke of slavery over the oppression of foreign invaders, and enable you to live in freedom. Friends, today, could we be weary and exhausted because we carry other yokes that is not God intended? Some food for thought. Nah. Could we be very overwhelmed, stressed out, tired, even to the point of like burnt out? Could it be because we are carrying a yoke that was not intended 
by God. Because if you look at the, the last verse, the yoke of Christ is easy and light. What can possibly be other yokes? Can be materialism or pursue or certain lifestyles. And that has placed a demand for us to support that kind of lifestyle. Once there was a family who got into a huge debt because they were always giving in to what the eldest son wanted. The eldest son was already a young working adult but had many kind of loves. The adult, uh, the, the, call it big boy's toys, wanted to have uh, a sports car, wanted to wear a certain kind of brand, wanted to uh, enjoy a certain kind of food, uh, do a certain kind of uh, activities and all are very um, costly things. And what happens is that they end up being filled with, uh, I mean, debt. The yoke, stressed. It's very stressful. Why? Because the yoke of materialism. Some is the yoke of workaholism. Workaholic. Being a workaholic. I have to warn myself. I, I think I have a little bit of that. You put that yoke and you keep working because you find your significance from your performance in your job. And so when you are at home with your family, you are like lifeless one. But at work, wow, suddenly like energized. You are three men's energy in one person. And you go on and on and on, working 12, 14, 16, 18 hours. I once had a young man who was, oh, he's a very brilliant guy. He is a researcher. He tells me that he used to, he works as a consultant, he used to work 18, 16 hours a day. 16 hours a day, every day, seven days in a week. I think his yoke is work. Some people's yoke is perfectionism. You seek to be perfect, you want to be perfect, everything is perfect. There's one author share this experience of herself when she bears this yoke of being trying to be perfect. And she says this, at one point in my life, I was trying to be the perfect woman. I was involved in so many community efforts. It was that feeling that I was never good enough. That whole perfectionist thing was driving everyone. You could bust your butt and it was not good enough. I think we are living in a culture that is so demanding. People are exhausted at the very end of the day. A lot of people have to self-medicate because it would be hard for them to look in a mirror otherwise. Trying to be perfect. That can be a yoke for us. So we're constantly trying to do that 120% and we become so weary and burdened. Jesus says, Come to me, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. There's once a mission school for kids. Uh, it was for uh, primary and uh, early learners. And then there was a teacher who was also the uh, principal of the school. And he went into the class and teach this passage my yoke and so he asked the first question to the children what is a yoke and one of the little kid answer teacher teacher a yoke is a, a wooden bar that is placed on two animals the teacher say very good then the next question he says what does it mean when jesus says that take up my yoke take up my yoke god's yoke what does it mean and this little girl says ding 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 Teacher, teacher, I think I know the answer. It is God putting his arms over you. I think we need to look at the fact that when Jesus says, my yoke is like, he's referring to life as his disciple, life in him, 
friendship with God. God never says that I will not allow you to have any burdens. There will be. But that burden which I allow you to carry will be light because my hands are over you. I will take you and I will lead you. You know, a lot of us strive on our own. We strive very hard on our own. We depend on our own resources, our own self-sufficiency. Over time, we run dry. Know why? Because you and I have limited resources. Correct? You and I, no matter how much energy, some of us here, I've got a friend who says that sleeping is a waste of time. Her energy level is superb. She is a high-intensity, high-energy person. Could do so many things in a day. Just brilliant. But friends, even as the scripture says in Isaiah, even youths and even my friend who is bursting in life energy will grow weary and tired because our resources are limited. We are people who are limited. But when we learn to go to God and allow God to take us on, His resources is limitless. Limitless. And therefore, when we say being yoked to God is allowing God to lead us, allowing us, going to God for the resources that we need, going to God with all our problems and our challenges. Thirdly, to claim Jesus' promise for rest for our souls is to learn from Him, to learn from Jesus. Jesus is the one who is God in flesh, right? Verse 27 tells us that, that he has, he, in, in Him, God has revealed Himself. And if we want to learn what it is, does it mean to live life falling after God, we learn from Jesus. We learn the truth of what it means to follow after God, to receive, to live life in accordance to God's plan. Following Jesus is something that we do every day. Every day. We learn how to do life, how to live life by following Jesus every day. So every day, Jesus is actually teaching us. Do you know that? Every day, through our, our days, our, our daily life, Jesus is teaching us. Now, one of the example Jesus showed us how he balanced stress and life. That's why he makes him a good teacher. Is this? You, do you think that Jesus is somebody who just sit by the garden and spend all day long thinking about the Bible? No, Jesus is a very busy person. In Mark chapter six thirty to thirty two, it records this: the apostles gathered around Jesus and reported to him all they had done and taught. Then. Because so many people were coming and going to Jesus and his disciples, needing help in teaching, in healing, in casting out demons, that they did not even have a chance to eat. Familiar for some of us, our deadline coming the next day, or that very evening at 5 o'clock, deadline, report has to be sent out. Right? Sweating. Lunch also. Don't think about lunch. Where to eat, what to eat. We don't even remember what time is it. We just know we have to meet the deadline. So, Jesus understands. No time to eat. They were so busy with the demands of life, of ministry. But listen to this. He said to his disciples, at the peak of busyness, when they're so overwhelmed, he said, come with me by yourself to a quiet place and get some rest. Jesus knows about balance. Recently, we read, you know, about WHO wanting to categorize burnout as a disease, right? Why? Because we know that this is the circumstances that many people face today, burnt out. About two years back, uh, they said that by 2020, which is next year, depression will overtake as the number one disease in the world. Now, why so much of this? Is because the demands and stresses of life is real. Do Jesus understand? Yes. Of course, Jesus didn't have WhatsApp and 
whatever else he didn't, you know, he, he works in a different working environment. He didn't work in the MNC, you know. But Jesus understands the demands of life. And he, remember, Jesus said, learn from me. I know how to handle stresses in life because I am God and understand how you're wired because now I am in flesh as a human being. I understand the frailty of a human being. But I also understand God's design for us. In the peak of our busyness, we need to learn to find space to go to God for rest. When you accumulate, uh, when you accumulate and you then finally say, oh, I finally need some time with God. Uh, too late, actually, my friends. Look at that. When Jesus was at the busiest time, he learned to pick out time for God in the midst of busyness. Come away with me to his disciples. Must learn that if we never stop and find place for God, we will run and run and run and run. There was once a pilot and it was said that the plane crashed and the reason for the plane crash is because the pilot thought that he has enough patrol to last them through the destination. But it didn't. When you try to push the limit, uh, we crash. How can we find rest even in the midst of our busy period? Learning to go on holiday with God. I know a lot of us plan our holidays uh, to the Balkans, la, you know, where else? Uh. Fantastic. One of my dreams is to go Israel. But we also need to learn to cultivate without a vibrant inner life, we run around like headless chicken. Really. We run around and being pulled to all directions. Learn to cultivate vibrant inner life by learning to take holidays with God. Doesn't need to be very long. You can start off with very short, a day away with God. Just you and your spouse, find some way, place to be quiet. Then come back. Then you may do a little bit more. Two days, four days, a week. Some people take a month. It depends. It doesn't matter. But to learn to plonk it in your calendar, to find time to be away with God. Just as much as we plan our holiday calendars, plan your holidays with God. Once a year. Be a way to be quiet with God, to spend time in His presence. Two, learn to have daily conversations with God. One of the ways you can do it is in your mornings when you start the day, you have a long schedule, I'm sure, you look at your planning, your itinerary for the day. Learn to pray through your itinerary. All right? Okay, let's say you look right at the beginning, you are up and you are uh, doing your prayer at 8 o'clock in the morning. You just have a skim through of your day, all right? Go into office, you've got a meeting with a client at 10. It's a tricky case. Then you have a lunch with some friends whom you have not met. And later at, in the evening, you've got to give uh, tuition to your own kids. Pray through your itinerary of the day. Lord, today I'm going to meet so-and-so. You know, give me the wisdom. Lord, later in the evening... I've got to spend some time doing maths with my son and he drives me nuts. Help me not to swallow him alive. Pray through the itinerary. Involve God because God already knows. But He just wants us to involve Him in our itinerary. You'll be surprised how God speaks to us. One day I was, uh, he was doing one of my, my own retreat. I was at a, a place where they were, uh, it has a lot of uh, wild animals also like, uh, for example, squirrel baby like little squirrel so I saw this little baby squirrel who was jumping from branches to branches and as it jumped to one of the branches it slipped and it slipped it fell from probably about let's say about maybe 20, 15 meters high or something like that uh, maybe not yeah about that uh, and it, it just dropped and when it dropped what happens to the squirrel instead? It, it actually just, uh, just remained there. It's like frozen like that. So I was very curious, is the baby squirrel dead? But I didn't want to scare it, so I watched for a distance. Actually, the baby squirrel is not dead. It's probably just crippled by the trauma of falling. 
for a moment, it's just crippled. It just cannot move. I know after a while, I didn't watch all the time, but after a while, it was not there. It was definitely, it went away. But for a moment, the shock of falling just crippled the poor little squirrel. And the voice of the Lord, I was having my prayer time with the Lord. And the Lord says, you know, because I was in the midst of something, uh, a decision, and the Lord spoke, you know, sometimes we are so fearful of falling, failing, that we, it cripples us. So just like the baby squirrel that falls, I know you fear that failure. But don't worry, it will be okay. I will be there, even if you have to fail. You know, God didn't tell me there will be failures, you know. He told me even if I fail, it will be still okay. I will make it. I think those kind of conversations that becomes very real to our situation because as Brother Kuran shared last week, we have the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Jesus who is actually speaking to us, engaging with us through the scriptures, through our own situation, conversations with Jesus. And thirdly, life lessons. Jesus teaches us life lessons, actually. The Bible is very relevant if we learn to learn to listen to what God is saying, not just intellectually, but in our hearts. Jesus has so much to say about life, about relationships, about priorities. If you read through the scriptures, Jesus has so much to say about doing life in the way that God desires for us. The Sermon of a Mount is one example about kingdom values versus our worldly values. Jesus knows what it's like. There's so much we can learn from Jesus. Therefore, Jesus says, come to me, learn from me, take up my yoke. This is where we claim and we learn the promises of Jesus. So friends, today, perhaps for some of us, we need to learn to listen to this afresh. Come to me, those who are tired, worn out, overwhelmed, burdened. I will give you rest. And by faith, we know we will. Let us pray. Let us take this moment to just quieten ourselves. Are you tired, weary, burdened, anxious? Will you right now respond to this invitation by our Lord Jesus himself? Come to not just any person, anything, but come to me. I'm the author and perfecter of your life. I am the full revelation of God. Take my yoke. Allow me to teach you. Learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart. Will you right now, whatever is that burden, the overwhelming factor, perhaps that is the not the yoke that was intended by God, but you are taking upon yourself. Will you give that to the Lord? Say, Lord, I do not want this yoke, but I take upon your yoke for me, your hand over my shoulders. Father, we want to thank you, O God, for the words of your Son, Jesus Christ, this promise of rest for our soul. So, Lord, we claim it in faith because of your deep grace for our life to learn, to give you our burdens and to take upon us, ourselves, the yoke of Christ, to learn every day to rest in your presence. We thank you. We pray, Holy Spirit, the Spirit of the living God, unpack the truths that we have just heard into our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.